Hi friends, it's Julie here. Make sure if you're watching this, please go ahead and comment and tell me you're here so that I know um, that you're on. I'd love to, to interact with you. Um, what we're going to learn here today is about creative play. And hopefully if you can learn how to do creative play with your kids, it could save you hundreds of dollars uh, on play therapists. So I love my play therapists and play therapists have such a great value for our families and such. If you've got kids that are dealing with issues, I, I strongly recommend them. But oftentimes kids are having to go to play therapy simply because they don't know how to express themselves, how to do creative play, all the things that we learn in creative play. And I used to think that creative play was kind of one of those things that really wasn't that important, you know, that, that kind of was something that would keep the kids occupied so that I could get the dishes done or whatever else I needed to do. And this is back before I knew about child development when I was just a young mom. And uh, now that I've learned about child development, I have learned that creative play, the experts are saying, is even more important than teaching your kids like ABCs or one, two, threes. So it's extremely important. Creative play is how kids will learn how to express themselves. It's how they learn to uh, use their imagination and creativity and develop that. Um, how they learn to dream of what's possible because they get to role play it. It's how kids will learn to role play real life. It's It gives them a chance to be that teacher or that mom and uh, you know, or the dad. It gives them a chance to be the fireman or the um, actress, whatever it is that they um, can imagine. And at first, that's going to be the things that they see in their daily life. So that's going to be role playing mom and dad and the things that go on in, in their family. And that's so important that they get a chance to do that because through creative play, kids will tell you things that they will not tell you if you're just having a conversation with them. So I, uh, I really hope that you will understand and embrace creative play with kids. I don't know if you've ever used like puppets with young kids, but it's really funny. If you as a mom are using a puppet and you will say to the kids, you know, I see after you've had an argument or something or you sent them to the room for something, um, you can come in with that puppet and kind of go, you know, hi, Tommy, I, I see you're really angry today. Is something going on? And the child will talk to that puppet and say, oh, you know what, mama did this. She sent me to my room. She did, you know, X, Y, Z. And the puppet can say, well, Tommy, that's not very nice. Why do you think your mom did that? And it gives them a chance to think about it and go, well, you know, I think she did it because this. And they go, really? Is there anything else? Well, maybe I did this. And so it gives them a chance to explore all those feelings. It's how kids will learn to express themselves. And the one thing that uh, employers are saying nowadays is that kids, as they get out into the workforce, they don't know how to talk. They don't know how to communicate. Um, all they know is the digital stuff. And that's not necessarily what they need when they're looking for employment. So um, having helping kids develop that voice for themselves is so, so important. So let me give you a couple examples of why creative or what creative play looks like in real life. So I brought a couple of things just to show you how that might possibly look. One of our things here is going to be expressive putty. So you can do this with a lot of different um, dolls, that sort of thing. But uh, um, putty's especially good at, at working on emotions for kids because you can change the expression on him by just doing like this. And you can change him from being really angry to now he's worried. Oh, his eyebrow looks funny. <laughs> so I can go like that. Um, this one even comes with cards like this. So you can um, put uh, the emotions, one of the emotional faces on the doll and then say, hey, have you ever felt like this? And you can talk about it. And like, oh, yeah, I did. And but he's soft and cuddly so that they can um, you know, interact and hug on him. The other thing that this one gives, it's kind of a, I don't know, helping hand for parents who don't aren't really good with that creative play because it gives them cards with situations like the big card here that you see in the front. That one is a birthday party with a clown, but the face is blank. 
So if uh, so when you get to that situation, you can say, hey, have you ever been at a birthday party? How did you feel? And you can talk about that and act that out with the kids. It gives them a chance to um, figure that out. So express it buddy is one of the things. Another one is going to be hide inside. And hide inside, now this one's one that you can start with with younger kids because it's got, comes with a house and it comes with lots of little friendly animals in here. We've got our fox. And we have our owl, and what else do we have in here? We've got a bird, that's got the crinkly sounds. We have a moose, I love the moose. And we've got a bunny who's a beanbag bottom. He's quiet because bunnies don't make any noise. And then there's also the hedgehog that has all the, the uh, corduroy on it. Everything needs a hedgehog. But how do you use this as creative play? So at first the little ones are just chewing on it and, and uh, that's totally fine with individual pieces. And then about a year of age, they do the dump and the fill with the house. But now when you get to like preschool age, that's when they're gonna start getting into the creative play with it. So like you might have the moose and he's coming home from a long day of work and he meets the hedgehog and the hedgehog's standing outside his house and won't let him in. Why won't you let me in, Mr. Hedgehog? Well. This is what happened, and, and they'll act it out. And, and it's, well, then I'm just gonna sneak in and I'm gonna go in through the window and I'm gonna get into my house that way because you can't stop me from going into my house if I wanna go into my house. See, I am in my house. <laughs> so they can act out all those creative stories um, about their home and coming home and um, you know whatever they want. But the animals are acting it out so the kids seem to be more free to express themselves in different situations. Now, a couple of examples here. Uh, one of them, this one's our, our uh, castle kit. So they build sand castles. Well, how is a sand castle really creative play, right? Because um, some people will stop at the sand castle building and which is fabulous and gets them outside and all that. But add that creative play with it. This set comes with little knights in shining armor. So you have the little knights on horses. So once they build the castle, then you can do the creative play with the knights coming home to the castle and, you know, breaking down the wall or whatever it is that they need to do. So um, that's an example of like more physical building play um, and how you can turn it into creative play. Another example would be like a, a doctor kit like this one. This one, um, Heartbeat MD, comes with a real stethoscope and it actually works. So the kids can listen to their own heartbeat, they can listen to the animals and play veterinarian with it. But say you've got a kid who's having problems going to the doctor. He doesn't, he's afraid of the doctor. He doesn't want to go to the doctor because the doctor always hurts or it always has shots or whatever. And I know of preschools who have used this kit to successfully get kids comfortable with going to the doctor. And uh, I mean, I had one, one wonderful story about how it helped a mom who was just really struggling with that. Hi, I'm glad you could join us. Alrighty, so a Heartbeat MD, so it's gonna help you with, the, it could help kids, you know, with going to the doctor with that. So now we've got like a real stethoscope that really works. They can use the chart to do the wipe off play. Hey Lori! <laughs> so I know you did a lot of creative play with your kids because you're fabulous with that kind of play. Um, so with the creative play, so you can mark off here, like what's wrong with them when they go to the doctor. So they can be like the nurse who's, who, who first is the person that you uh, meet and say, what's wrong with you today? And they can mark off on there, what's wrong with me? And it comes with a great bag so that you can put everything in there and store it all in there. That helps us as parents, right? <laughs> all righty, another example was gonna be like a good set of wooden blocks. And if you do not have wooden blocks for your kids, Definitely, that's something I would invest in, a good set of wooden blocks. Wooden blocks are different than like Legos. They teach different concepts. Like one of the things they teach is um, uh, patience. And I never thought of that, <laughs> but that is actually a learned skill. So um, a set like this where, you know, they can build on it and let's see here, we can build our little houses and all that. So it's not only just building, but now that I've built the city or I've built the house, now I can use my little creative play people and have them go on some adventure in the house. And, and you can talk about, well, what are you building and, and all that. So a lot of creative play with that you can, 
but you could just stop at building the tower and knocking it over. But don't stop at just that. And encourage the kids to tell about their what they've created. Uh, another example, let me see if I can pick it up for you here. This one is a called Foldaway Kitchen. So our kitchen, and, and that's so cool because the the part, the front part will open up. And the kids can store their, you know, the kitchen, they can use like the oven, but they can also store all their pots and pans and such in there. The top also will come off so that they can use it like a toy box and put their things in there. Or it can all fold down into a box like that. So it's uh, great for storage. But one of my favorite stories with this one is a child with special needs. Um, was able to play kitchen because the mom could put because it's really lightweight she could put it in bed with the child and so the child didn't have to stand at a physical kitchen it could be right there in bed and she could play but I've also had a lot of um, people like this for like grandma's houses because you could fold it up and put it away when they're not there um, or for like camping it gives the kids a chance to play uh, kitchen instead of playing in the fire <laughs> and so but kitchen play my goodness they get to experiment. What are you going to make today? Are you going to be the chef? Are you? And don't think it's just for girls. It is definitely for boys. Some of our best chefs are boys. Um, so that uh, by playing cooking, it is, you know, I can experiment with are you, what kind of food are you making today? Are you making vegetables? Well, what kind of vegetables are you making? Do you want, really want to have those vegetables or ooh, do you not? Ooh, that one's a smelly vegetable. So you can really play with that concept. So that helps them to get to the table and you've you've made something maybe that you pretend made and it what gave, encourages them to then try it in real life there's you know just that sense of exploration and figuring it out one last example I'll give you is our schoolhouse play tent and one of the things I will tell you that I love tents but the thing I don't like about tents is they always break have you ever, been, ever, ever had that happen? <laughs> um, this one I love because of the lifetime guarantee. And you don't have to worry about it breaking. It, but what's really cool with this one, this one kind of helps, I think, for those of us that are a little bit more challenged with creative play and what do you say to kids? Sometimes um, we're so used to talking to adults, it's hard for some parents to, um, or you know, grandparents to get down on the floor and figure out what to play because it's like, okay, I don't even know what to say to you. In fact, that is why puppet play has stopped a lot. And it's not because puppet play is not valid and important. In fact, play therapy therapists will use um, puppets all the time and they love puppets. But fewer puppets are being sold because the adults don't know what to do with them. The adults don't know how to have those conversations with kids. Isn't that sad? Um, so it's really important for our kids, but because we don't know what to do with it anymore, we're not buying it. So um, one of the things I like about this play tent is it kind of tells you what to do. Uh, with this one, you can play school. And let's see, let's see here. It's got all these different cards. And they slide in on both ends of the house. It has this big clear pocket that you can slide the, the card into. And so you can play different subjects or topics. So for instance, one of them has the ABCs on them. One of them has like counting one and then the numerals. Uh, one of them talks about character traits. One has like the eye chart. One's like the world map. So it gives you things to talk about. You can pretend you're playing school and, and in that subject and you can teach them things or they can teach you better than yet. Have them pretend to be the teacher and teach you the student. Uh, one of them is blank. So they can write uh, with the wipe off markers and figure out what kind of subject they want uh, to talk about that day or maybe they just want to you know name their their playhouse says you know cindy's playhouse and so they can write in there they can decorate it use their art skills that's another form of creative play is the art skills so let them use that wipe off marker and write all over that slide it in so they can show off their artwork on their tent that day um, this one also has a clock the hands will move on the clock so that they can actually play um, with the concept of time. What's really cool, and it doesn't show it here, but on the back side of it, it has a big window that doubles as a puppet theater. So all that creative play, you can use on that. 
So I'm going to let you go there. That's the end of our creative play thing. Make sure if you're interested in any of these things or want to learn more about creative play and other things that we have on my website, it's discoverytoysforkids.com. The four is spelled out F-O-R. So discoverytoysforkids.com. Everything I've shown you here today is on our big sale that we've got going on right now. Uh, we only do sales twice a year, so it's a big deal when we do it. We've got things on sale up to 50% off. So um, if I can be any help, let me know. Take care. Bye-bye.